Next object I want to go over is not the cube. I'd like to go over the cone and the cylinder. Now these are hmm, they're pretty much the same. They're a little bit different. You can again drag on the orange handles and get different results in height and the bottom radius, the top radius. Hmm. So you can actually use this as a cylinder if you wanted to. Now there's something interesting about these objects though that uh, isn't apparent when you first make the object. Is that these these um, caps is what they're called here. If we go to the caps properties we can enable or disable those. These are actually not connected to the geometry. So if we make this edible and I'll discuss that later. And we select these faces here. We start, we just drag some up, we'll notice that they're not connected to this piece of geometry. So as if we just grab these faces, we notice they are connected to the geometry. And that's the difference with the, with the cones and with the cylinders. Cylinders are much the same way. Have your caps, you can enable or disable them. Uh, if you want to make it um, whole, there is a tool for that that I will go over later. But this is the same. You can um, have your rotation segments change however you want them. And then there's also orientation. So if you want to just rotate it, you can. So you got a, a variety there. But um, you can also just use the rotation tool, which I'll go over in about uh, very soon. Next, I want to take a look at um, the rest of these few objects here, the polygon, the plane, and the disk. They're all very similar to each other. And so we'll go again to the object here. Height, width and height, segments. You can also make it a triangle if you want to. And, of course, the plane, which is much the same. So if we bring down the segments to, to one, we more or less get a polygon which is um, very much the same. And of course, our disk <coughs> a little bit different. Still very similar. It's just round. Just our rotation segments. And we get a triangle. A little bit different orientation there. Notice we also have an inner radius. So if we wanted to have just a little circle here. And that also coincides with the tube here, which is um, basically an extruded disc that has an inner radius to it. <coughs> Go to the object mode and, and drag the little handles, change the size of our object as we would like, and get a tube. We can use this to probably fairly quickly make a wheel or some kind of round object. And there's the pyramid, which is um, pretty similar to the cone, except, of course, it's a prism-like object. The capsule. <coughs> which is, you can make into a sphere if you'd like, but it is generally <laughs> reserved because of its capsule like abilities. <laughs> Simple enough you can uh, change it much like the cylinder the segments on either side. So um, what's unique about this object though <coughs> is you can use it as a cylinder that's already connected to it because these objects are actually joined together so if we go to make edible click and drag these around notice they're actually attached. So if you want to you can always just drag these points in and then uh, you can have a cylinder with the object it's not one piece of mesh, one piece of geometry and they're not separate so and the oil tank which is much the same way notice there's no uh, no caps listed So again, if we make that edible, move these pieces of geometry. Oh, they are detached. 
They're not called caps, but they are definitely separate pieces of geometry. The platonic, which is um, a different object. I uh, haven't, haven't really used this object a lot. Certainly looks like you can make something interesting with it. Probably a diamond of sorts. Or a cube with equal segments all around. And your torus, which is generally, a, I guess you could say, a cylinder that's been bent all the way around. <coughs> well, notice you can slice this. There's probably a few of these other objects, a few of these other objects that had slice capabilities, like like the oil tank. Just slice it in half. So those options are available. object mode and drag the orange handles around. So if you just change things around you can see exactly what they do in the viewport without too many problems. <coughs> and of course the landscape don't really use that a lot but it's uh, general, generally a plane that looks looks like a landscape. Put a texture over it, and then it should uh, work fairly well. Of course, you can always adjust that. And you got your basic figure object, which is actually, if you make this edible, you'll notice it's actually several different objects. Now this object is fairly unusual from the rest of the objects. This actually takes a texture, just a 2D black and white texture, and makes it into a piece of geometry. So if we see here, we go to texture, and we uh, open up a texture here. See here. Relief. Nope. <laughs> so we notice that it actually made a piece of geometry based off of that texture. Just some some random shape I did. And you can adjust the segments however you'd like. I think there's a little too many. So you can get a you can make a landscape with this probably a little bit more accurate accurately than using the landscape object. But uh, it's a definitely um, an unusual object, but so certainly something worth looking into. And if you'd like, you can also make it into a spherical object. And you can get some pretty strange results. Make uh, a small little planet of sorts. So uh, that's the relief object.